Take a second and close your eyes. Place yourself in your future kitchen, scrolling through your smart fridge screen, your smart fridge screen, searching for a good snack. Nothing whets your appetite. You turn to your built-in robo chef and ask it to prepare an omelette. No pepper, extra salt, just the way you like it. It's a good day. But what's this? A sudden crushing pain in the centre of your chest. Your smartwatch has detected an abnormal rhythm. It reads, go to your car. As you stumble in to your vehicle, it has already mapped out the fastest route to your nearby hospital and begins its autonomous journey. Your local emergency department has been notified of your arrival and allocates your case to the appropriate admitting team. A complete medical record is compiled of your family history, uh, prescriptions, handed to your uh, admitting team whilst, it, whilst uh, you exit your car. The smart porter collects you, navigates you efficiently from radiology, phlebotomy, electrophysiology, and finally to your pre-allocated hospital bed. A complete report of all of your inpatient uh, investigations, ready for your admitting team, or ready within 30 minutes of you reaching your bed. Your medical team can make an efficient management plan, and when you are finally ready for discharge, the hospital's record system compiles all inpatient investigations into a single report, one for you, one for your family practitioner. Your local pharmacy remotely updated with your new prescriptions, and you are sent home with one month supply. The, the future of healthcare is bright. It sounds good, right? Wrong. Not only is this unattainable fantasy one of unimaginable cost, it's about as undesirable as we could ever hope healthcare to be. Our obsession with disease is so deeply embedded into our mindsets, we don't engage with healthcare until precisely those moments we are not healthy. No PR firm would manage a company's reputation like this. No financier would be so cavalier with an investment portfolio. And yet when it comes to our health, we are all too willing to await the next crisis. Preventative healthcare is decades behind treatment. And all too often, the attention of policymakers, entrepreneurs, and investors are drawn to, drawn to finding better ways of treating disease rather than preventing them altogether. As exciting as that futuristic autonomous healthcare was, at the end of the day, do you really want to have a heart attack? As global populations age and waistlines grow, the cost of treating disease is skyrocketing. Total global healthcare spending is growing faster than GDP, and this is magnified in low and middle income countries, where growth spending, now health spending, is growing at a remarkable 6%. In middle income countries, per capita health spending has doubled since 2000. Even in high income countries, populations have been forced to increase their allocation to health despite the economic crisis of 2008 9. The latest data from 2016 shows that as a population, as a global population, we spend an eye-watering 7.5 trillion US dollars on healthcare. Our treatment-centered model of healthcare is unsustainable. And this is, of course, before we consider the human cost of this massive disease burden. Of the 57 million people who died in 2017, Almost three quarters died from non-communicable diseases, such as heart disease, diabetes, respiratory disorders associated with smoking. 60% of these were estimated as being premature deaths. Now that's almost 35 million people dying prematurely of preventative disease. And of course, non-communicable diseases are not just problematic because they pose a risk of mortality. They represent long-term chronic conditions that are expensive to manage and have serious impacts on the lives of the individuals and families who have them. 80% of global disability is due to non-communicable diseases, seriously reducing the quality of life of individuals and costing us a fortune. It does not require a doctor to tell you that prevention is better than cure. So as healthcare spending promises to grow as we focus 
ever more intently on getting better at treating disease, we are forging a path towards a very unwell planet. We call it healthcare, but we practice disease care. So how do we get here? To answer that question, we need to go back to the year 400 BC and visit a man called Hippocrates. This was the great thinker who prescribed a set of duties for all healthcare practitioners that we've since compiled into the Hippocratic Oath the universal doctrine that all doctors swear by before being granted a medical license. I trained as a doctor in London, and the first tenet of this oath is to do no harm. This principle underpins every action taken by a physician, from prescribing medication to performing surgery. Now, if you were to take the time to read the Hippocratic Oath, you'd realise that this covenant that binds doctors from across the planet you would realize that healthcare is what physicians do. Healthcare is something that patients have done to them. Healthcare is the act of treating disease, not preventing it. Now, this was perfectly fine um, for, until as late as the mid 20th century because the bulk of healthcare burden was infectious disease and physical trauma from work or war. It made sense to have a one-stop shop healthcare system. If you broke a bone, we'll fix it. If you develop gangrene, we'll cut it out. The one-stop shop healthcare system made, met with this kind of demand for treatment-based system. Now, this is not the world of today. We are an aging population that's gaining weight and losing sleep. The chronic long-term conditions that plague the modern world cannot be solved with this one-stop shop effort. Cure. The word cure has long since left the vocabulary of the medical profession. You'll hear words like disease management and symptom control. Healthcare has become truly unsustainable. And the models we use at the moment cannot fit with the chronic problems we have today. But is there another way? Are we able to change the direction of healthcare and design a different future? One where healthy people have the power to remain healthy instead of succumbing to the inevitability of illness. Could we prevent disease? I used to work in an acute medical unit in London, and one of the most frustrating challenges I faced was the sheer predictability of preventable diseases. Take, for example, heart failure. This is a condition where fluid accumulates in the lungs. Now, you can track this fluid accumulation by weighing yourself every day. If your weight suddenly increases, it means that you're accumulating fluid and the heart failure is getting worse. Now, at this point, you can go and see your primary care practitioner for a consultation. They can titrate your medications, your condition can be brought back under control, and you can go about your daily life. Nonetheless, every day as I would head into work, I could almost guarantee at least one person will come in with such severe fluid overload that they would require not only an admission, but they would undergo further permanent heart damage. Now, in the United States, the average cost for a heart failure admission is $14,000. The cost of seeing that primary care physician some weeks earlier to change your medications and control the disease $100 to $200. By preventing the admission, you save money and maintain health. This is cheaper health care. This is better health care. So then you ask, why is it that we don't prevent heart failure admissions? In fact, why is any prevention-based innovation so rare? No matter where you're from in the world, your healthcare ecosystem will comprise of three players. The patient the provider, and the payer. Now, the patient is your unwell, desperate customer. The provider is the hospital or clinic, and the payer is an insurance firm or the state or some combination of both. Two of these players rely on disease for business as usual, and the third, well, has very little power to do anything about it. I'm not suggesting that providers or payers are causing disease, but they certainly have no systematic incentive for preventing it. To build a world that is sustainable, 
we need to rebalance this monopoly. And we need to give power to patients to take control of their own health. The next step towards patient-centered healthcare starts with you and with a complete understanding of your own health in real time. Now, some of you may have uh, smart watches or wearable devices. In fact, all of you will probably have a phone. And you have a think for a second why it is that you can tell me with a few taps on your phone in great technical detail the condition of, say, your stock portfolio, but you can give me no quantifiable metrics by which you can quantify your health. Very few people can speak to the health of their liver, the function of their heart, the degree to which arteries in your legs are blocked. The bridge between today and preventative healthcare is your data. As I said, some of you may be wearing smartwatches, detecting your heart rate and maybe, maybe even your temperature. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. What if your mattress quantified the quality of your sleep? What if your toilet analyzed your urine for glucose to detect diabetes? What if your mirror assessed your mood? All this data contextualized and available at your fingertips for you to share and use at your discretion. Show your doctor, donate to research projects and innovation ideas you believe in and care about. Powerful predictive modeling tools are available today and with modern machine learning, we can build a future that doesn't just detect disease, but predicts it. We could know when to go to healthcare systems long before we become unwell. We could prevent disease. I want to tell you a new story. Close your eyes and take yourself back to your future kitchen. Your toaster is reading you the morning news as you scroll through your dining table menu looking for some breakfast. You take a deep breath. You pull out your tablet and take a look at your health profile. You expand out the graphs to see how your progress has been going. Your cholesterol has come down now that you've cut out full fat butter and started adding fish to your diet. Now you've started doing those evening runs, you've noticed your lung tidal volume steadily increase. Even your resting heart rate has become a source of pride. You put down your tablet and decide to treat yourself this morning. Blueberry pancakes. It's a great day. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to have a heart attack to experience healthcare. The challenges of the modern world require smart solutions. We cannot afford to rely on the treatment-centered models of old. Let's envision healthcare without disease. Let's prioritize prevention. And let's forge a path towards a new, bright future. Thank you.